Hey everybody, this is Adams, and this is where I look at some of my favorite pots from Edmund DeWall's The Pot Book and talk about how they were most likely made. And it's a great book. I, th I recommend it to everybody. There's some just best examples throughout ceramic history of the world uh, assembled by Edmund DeWall, who's right here. And the book is in the Brooklyn Clay Library for anyone who's in the area and wants to look at it. Today we're going to be looking at Thomas Toff's mermaid dish from the late 1600s. It was he was a potter in the in that time who was in the western midlands of England and he had a pretty I think good career. He, I unfortunately I think he died poor, but he had a good production run I think when he was doing it full time. And of course it was so long ago, don't know too much about him. But page 274, anyone who's following along. And so he's really recognized because there's a good number of these uh, quote-unquote chargers, large plates, that are that survive. He was really characteristic of the style. He had a lot of mermaids, uh, the king and queen a lot, coats, coats of arms, um, that kind of stuff. And because these were a little larger than normal dinner plates, I think these were more for decoration. Uh, rather than functional use, which is probably why they survive, because they weren't used other than to, to look at, marvel at. And this style that he has, this uh, slip trail decoration style, was uh, characteristic of the area he was in, the Western Midlands, um, during this time especially. And how I think how this came about was that the area is known for its slipware, which is when you have a mold that you make and pour liquid clay into it and can reproduce these multiple, exact multiples over and over again. Uh, a lot of potters who enjoyed and I think had the skill set to make uh, pottery would use this slip that was probably easily accessible and probably cheap to decorate on rather than to actually make work on. You can see he used just he, I think in the region, it was mostly red clay that uh, was available. So he used this white slip to kind of cover it, to, you know, give a nice white neutral background. And then a dark red or, you know, not quite black and a lighter red to, um, to use as, uh, for detail or for the, the foreground. And you can see it's all kind of amber tinged and this was due to the leaded glaze that they were using just the the clear quote unquote clear leather uh, lead glaze would always go a little amber so he used this style a lot and first i'll talk about making a charger or plate uh, what i did for a long time was just do it kind of make the plate intuitively like make a wide base and kind of play with um, this part, the like a uh, whip a little bit until it looked right and then kind of trimmed it and you know did what I think most people do. What I what I learned recently was this kind of nicer way that seems counterintuitive at the time but gives you a little more control and provides a little more compression in the clay that makes it a little less prone to warping and a little less problematic really. And honestly, I find it easier and you fuss over it a little less. But the process is making, you know, doing your coning when you're on the pottery wheel, uh, making essentially a pancake, and then using your rib, driving your rib along the base of whatever excess uh, surface of a bat you have, and moving the pancake of the clay inwards, it drives the clay upwards against the rib and then it just follows the rib up and so you have a pretty thin wall around the the diameter of your around the circumference rather of your clay and then you just push it over um, it makes a lot more sense when you kind of see it in person but with that compression of clay that the rib did it keeps it for, um, from warping as much or it keeps breaking as much. You have a little more control. And honestly, it's I, I find it a lot more easier. And then, of course, trim it. Like, um, 
you'd see your hopefully if you're taking a class your teacher would tell you a, a couple of good details on trimming but then after it's in the kind of it's tri trimmed up you put it on the leather hard stage one or two coats depending on the thickness of the slip um, on it to give it that white whiteness you can then use um, a couple slip trailing tools whether it's like a squeeze bottle with a couple different openings it could be I always used a, sort of like an ear syringe they call it you can get it at like a pharmacy and it's a tool I feel like it's around just because people might use it once and never use it again uh, but it's a nice little squeeze bottle with a kind of small opening you can get some online of course or it could be as simple as a plastic bag filled with slip with a, just a tiny hole in it you know think of like toward more toward cake decoration or something um, but you can see like he he only had a couple couple colors to work with but he did a lot out of them and you can see that one um, a couple different options we have here um, I think especially now with like the folk art and outsider art revival even though he was a a potter you know functioning potter for several decades it does have that kind of folk art look to it that's popular now more than ever really um, it appeals to me for sure and it's a lot of really great work in a, a really nice kind of a plate or charger too and here's a good detail just so you can see uh, he was probably applying all this decorative slip when when the slip he put on in the plate was in like a drier leather hard stage and uh, so it wasn't fully dry of course but it was dry enough for it was wet enough for the slip to absorb into it a little bit but not absorb so much that it would flatten out or um or anything would happen for it so it still retained these kind of raised lines that um I think functionally would make it really hard to eat off of without chipping or something but decoratively provides this nice other kind of three-dimensional element on it um, pretty pr produces some nice pieces so that's Thomas Toff thanks for listening